Hello and welcome to My Retro Watches. My name is Mike. This video is all about this watch here. It's a very quick video. This is what I'm affectionately calling the Rat Watch. Uh, surprise, surprise, it is a Seiko. Uh, it's actually a Seiko Advan, although you'd never know that. And it's a 6106 movement, which is quite a nice movement. It's got hacking and plenty of jewels. Uh, this came as a job lot. It wasn't even the one I wanted. It was $20 for four watches for parts. And I took one look at this with the back off and thought, that is a massive, massive project. And then something went off in my head thinking, maybe if I clean it, I could just see if I could get it going. So that's kind of what I did. Uh, it was a bit of a test to see how good or bad my skills would be, but also to see how just how far gone a Seiko can be and actually still come back into service. So I'm gonna show you some pictures on the on the bench in a moment then I've got some still photos I didn't tend to make a video of it really but I just thought I'd do a quick one uh, so still videos uh, photo sorry of all the, uh, the the stripping down and then the rebuild uh, then we'll come back to the bench I'll put it on the timograph you can see it on the timograph as it's running now and um, perhaps I'll even put it on the microscope so you can just see a little bit clearer uh, closer up um, like I say I want to keep it short and sweet um, it's not an attractive watch, but it's just a very good attestment to just how durable a Seiko can be. So without further ado, let's get onto the bench. Okay, here we are on the bench, and hopefully you can tell why I call it the Rat Watch. Uh, it is in pretty poor condition, uh, but that's the cool thing about it, really. What a life this must have had to have a dial ruined as much as that. Um, that really is sabotage. Uh, the hands are quite cool. Uh, the, the minute and second hand, sorry, the minute hand and the hour hand uh, have got sort of serrations on the side. Uh, the loom's long gone. Uh, the second hand still works, although it is slightly bent. Um, now, this was an Advan, and I don't know whether you'd be able to see, um, but in the right light, you can just sort of see what was left of the swirl there. Uh, so, at one stage, this was quite a high end Seiko. Uh, I've already looked it up, it had a really nice bracelet attached to it as well. So it's a shame that it's it's fallen from grace. It would have had a faceted crystal, I think, as well. And the crystal on this particular one, if you can see, because I'm casting lots of shadows here, uh, the crystal is in equally uh, bad condition, along with the case. And the case back, which doesn't even belong to this watch, at least it belongs to a, a 6106, but it's not the, the same. Um, what's interesting about this as well, just as a side point, it's got 17 mil lugs. I don't think I've ever come across a watch with 17 mil lugs, which is <laughs> very difficult. You can't find a strap for that very easily. And I've just squeezed in an 18 mil uh, just for uh, demonstration purposes. And actually, actually wear it. I've been wearing it for the day. Uh, so, OK, look, I'm going to take you through the still photos now uh, of just the, the uh, disassembly and a bit of the assembly. And then you'll meet me back on the bench here where we'll stick it on the timographer and I'll show you just how well-ish this performs. Stay tuned. Uh, a little bit before I put it on the timograph, um, 
the watch had to be cleaned twice. So I originally cleaned it through the watch cleaning machine uh, and a bit in the ultrasonic as well, should I say. And it was filthy, as you can see by that little jar photograph. Um, on inspection, uh, I wasn't too happy, so I had to rewash everything again, and I washed it this time in some ho hot soapy water. Uh, again in the ultrasonic, gave that about half an hour on a hot wash, uh, took it out, dried it for a day, and then put it through the cycle on the uh, watch cleaning machine. And then all the parts, as much as they still look pretty rough, uh, were clean enough for me to attempt the rebuild, which is what I did. Uh, the only part that I was unable to use was actually the balance that you can see going there. There was nothing wrong with the old balance uh, spring itself. Uh, the hairspring was absolutely fine, but the um, the pivot on the bottom of the uh, the balance staff uh, was worn, uh, too worn. So when it was on dial down position like this, it ran fine. But you know, the moment I turned it over this way, it would stop. Um, I don't have a, a staking step. I don't know how to um, restaff one of these things. So I had to go through my donors, of which I found a suitable donor and basically just change the uh, balance wheel and put the, the, the same hairspring back on uh, to try and keep as much of the, the watch together as possible. And it then sprang into life and it would run in all directions. So I was quite pleased about that. Okay, so enough of the talking, let's put it on and see what happens. I've set the um, time grapher here to 54.5 uh, degrees of amplitude, which is what the correct setting is for a Seiko. 6106 and we'll put it in there dial side up and we'll start it going and see what readings we get now and there we go they're starting to come through already so it's running 18 seconds uh slow uh, in this position uh, it was yesterday to be fair and uh, that's when i finished building it so but i've not tweaked it any further particularly uh, what I was still amazed at, and I still am now, as the amplitude. The amplitude at 188, it might sound quite low, uh, and in, in many respects it is, but given the condition of this watch, the amount of dirt that fell out of it, the amount of rust and grime and everything else that was in these parts, I mean, ev even to the point that some of the jewels, or, or the Dioshock jewels, they look dreadful under the microscope, you know, quite worn, uh, almost scratched. Um, so to actually get a a semi-decent reading with a, a reasonably straight line uh, was fantastic for me. It, I don't know whether it's showing my skill. I would, I'd love to think that, but I don't really think that's the case. I think it's just down to Seiko's, you know, robust engineering. I've done so many of these 1970s uh, Seikos now, and some of them I take off the case back, and it's pretty evident that I'm the first person uh, in there and there's a good chance that these watches were made when I was around two or three years old. So it's, it's waited like 45 years to come to uh, my bench. And I take the uh, the case back off. The thing's often still running. I give it a clean and it's, it's absolutely bang on and running again. Uh, so, you know, the, maybe they're not the prettiest of movements to look at, but they're certainly engineered well. I mean, these things don't seem to wear too much. OK, as I said, the balance staff uh, had worn in this one. Um, but it is remarkable. What we'll do now, we'll just change a position. So we've just got that down on the side like that now. And we just give it a minute to catch up with itself. These things always take a little while to, to catch up. And as you can see, it's slightly a slight beat error, which you would expect. Uh, fairly minimal, um, but the rate has stayed pretty constant from that particular movement. And we can turn it again and we'll turn it like that. So often these other positions can start to stress the, um, the balance with a bit of gravity. Um, and also if there's anything slightly out of alignment or you've, you've got a lot of end shape, this is where it'll, it'll tend to show. So again, I'm very, very happy that already in three positions, we're pretty much constant. We're losing a few. We've lost a little bit of amplitude. We've actually gained accuracy now. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty good. And the last position, if I can remember how to do it, I often turn it the other way around for this. In fact, that's what I will do. So we'll just 
just put it in uh, like that. So I always think the dial down is the easiest position. You usually get the best reading from that uh, because the the balance has a natural um, reaction to gravity and it pulls it down into the dual setting better and runs more efficiently. And as you can see straight away, I mean, I don't think we can get much better than that currently. We're at uh, a perfect um, rate, perfect beat error, and the amplitude is pretty close to 200, which is always my target. Uh, so that uh, is very impressive. Very impressive indeed for a, for a watch, again, that I keep saying is, is in such a rough, rough condition. So I wanted to try and keep this video short. Um, hopefully this is interesting to you. It's completely different to what I'd normally do. Uh, let's just put it on a, on the microscope. I'll set that up very quickly. And we'll just have a very quick look at the movement and perhaps a look, look at the dial. You can see it really close up and see just how rough it is. And then we'll finish the video. Okay, so here we are on the scope and you're just looking at a bit of the dial there and a bit of the hands and I'm focusing in on, I'm just going to try and get my tweezers in here so you can see, so just here there's a little sort of spiral, hopefully you can see that and that would have been red and that would have been the the Advan um, motif or logo. So as you can see the dial is would have been nicely textured as well, there's a lot of texture going on uh, but everything about it is battered like I say, all the hour markers are all had it. Uh, the dial is in really bad, in a bad way. Uh, just wondering actually there whether it might have even said something or whether that's just disc and coloration. I'm not too sure. Could have said Advan, I'm not sure. Uh, as you can see, the hands are interesting, uh, although missing the loom. And of course, if we try and focus on the crystal, the crystal is... Uh, even though this is a replacement crystal because it would have been a, a faceted one, uh, even that's in poor condition. And along with the case that you're not going to really be able to see very well there. And you can see the second hand there is bent as well. Uh, we'll flip it over and we'll have a quick look at the movement. There's not to see, much to see when they're built. Uh, that's the balance, of course, the main feature. And you can see on there that there is some corrosion still um, down here lots of scratches I mean that's been dragged along something at some point with that without the case back and generally everything is fatigued and I can see the screws are rusty uh, even through the cleaner that's not cleaned that off however uh, you've just seen how kind of well it runs considering sorry I'm taking this the wrong way everything is everything is worn so there's the, you can just see the, the, the lid of the barrel there. Again, that's been rubbing on something continuously for a long time. And that's part of the pore lever setup, we can just see. And strangely, the pore levers are okay. You know, normally those ones are a bit of a weak spot, uh, but they were okay. Um, so there we are, guys. That is the, um, the Rat Watch, hopefully short video. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, of course. Um, if you've got any questions or any comments, please leave them because I'll look at all of them uh, and I will try and answer as many as I can. I'd be very interested to see what your feedback is, whether you think I'm just completely crazy spending all this time trying to resurrect this thing that I'm probably hardly ever going to wear. Um, so I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Of course, um, Thanks very much for watching. I will see you in a new one very, very, very soon.